Hello everyone, welcome back to Maelstrom Gaming. My name is Malachi Gardner, and today I'm going to be starting my playthrough of Whitetail Wilderness Woodland Pursuit, designed by Kevin Schott. I hope you all enjoy the video. It's the first day of deer season, the excitement is palpable as you prepare to head out into the wilderness and pursue North America's greatest big game animal. Welcome everyone to my playthrough of Whitetail Wilderness Woodland Pursuit, which is a bit of a tongue twister, but let's get into the game. So we are going through the scenario, and that's the first one that's listed in the scenario booklet here, and this is kind of the vanilla game, if you will. This is what you're going to play first, and this is kind of the basis that all the other scenarios are based off of, similar to like the dungeon crawl scenario and Dragonfire, for example. So, this one's called The Opening Day, and I just read this little introductory flavor text there. So, we have the map set up. It's a 4x4 grid for this scenario. We have third deer cards in the deer deck, which means that we have 20 does and 10 bucks, and we do not have the monster legendary bucks. And then the objective is to shoot the largest buck possible. Score points according to the buck taken. Check your score against the table below to get your evaluation. And then we have all of the different scores and ratings here, which we can reference at the end of the game to see how well we did. So, this is the game all set up here. This is the woods that we're wandering in. We have our little hunter token, and we're going to be able to go on one of these, flip it over, and start exploring. And finding a good place to hunt, and hopefully bag a buck. And so, to start exploring, what we're going to do is we're going to play one card from our hand, and we're going to move equal to its movement value. So many of these cards are usable in at least two ways. So for example, we have this wild card here. We have the top action, which is the hunt action, which as you might guess, is an action you take during hunting. So the wild is wild, it can be any type of action, and I'll get into what that means later, but this will allow us to roll one extra die for any type of check, which is nice. But then on the bottom, most cards will have a movement value. For example, this one's a move one, and then we can move, starting out we can go from any edge of the board, so we can go to any one of these and explore on that location, but we can do that one, or we could place on this other card, like this shoot action here, which gives us three dice for a shoot action, and then we can move two if we discard it as a move instead. Now, I like the idea of just discarding this wild, which is a move one. So I think I'm going to do that, place this in my discard pile, and then we can go on to any edge of the board. It really doesn't matter because we can start from anywhere, and so it doesn't really matter that much how we choose because it's all random. So let's just go right here. So this is a wilderness card, and there's a bunch of different numbers and stats on it. We have our A, which is activity, and that's how much deer activity is inside of that location. We have cover how much cover is in this location, and the advantage, which is, are there any good hills and vantage points that we can shoot from, which will help us when we're identifying deer and shooting them. And then we have four dice here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set these stats. So you can have zero to three for all of them, and let's see what it is. Before we do that, we actually have to draw a card right here, and there are two different ways we can do that. We can just draw the top card of our deck over here, or we can pick one of these cards here and add that to our hand. I think I would like to grab this card right here, it's a tree stand, and I'll put that in my hand and then it'll be replaced. So you can do a blind draw if you don't like these cards here, but it is usually better to take these because you actually see what you're going to get and you can be a little bit more strategic. And you do need to use your cards very efficiently because when this deck runs out, the game's over. So we need to bag a deer before the deck runs out. Alright, so we have our four dice right here, and I'm going to roll them. And then we are going to be able to set these stats to the dice rolls. So, we have four dice here. We have a two, two fours, and then five. You're going to divide each of those by two, and then you can assign each of those to a different stat by using these colored tokens that I just dropped. So green is going to be for activity, then we have purple for cover, and then red for vantage. And so we can divide these by two, rounding down. So this becomes one, which we don't want to use that, so we'll get rid of that. And then we have a two, a two, and then a two. So these are all two, which means that we don't actually have any choice. So I'll assign this two to vantage, this two to cover, and then this two to activity. 
Now, if we had rolled some other things, like if we had rolled a six here, that would be a three, and then we can choose which one of these stats we'd like to bump up. But that's actually a pretty good roll having everything two. Although it would have been nicer to have some threes in there. But it's better than nothing. So now what we're going to do is we can place our little pawn on here, and then we have the activity rating, which is two, which means that we can move two deer cards from this face down inactive deer deck, and we can take these and place them over here into the active deer pile. So we have two deer in the active deer pile now. So these deer cards, now that they are in the active pile, we're going to be able to encounter them as we hunt through the woods. Now that we've moved on to the board, we can do our next action. And so that was the movement action. You also can activate gear cards, which we actually have drawn quite a few of these. We've drawn four right away. And these are going to give us special abilities that are passive. Now, most gear just stay in front of you and they give you some sort of stat bonus. For example, this deer call here gives you plus one die for hunting. This one gives you plus one die for hiding. And then this one gives me plus two dice for shooting. Now, there's also deployed gear, which each have their own little token. And you're able to place that on the location you're in when you play it. And then it gives you the bonuses, which is plus one die for ID and then plus one die for hiding, as long as you're in that location. So that is how that works. Now, also, these do have an action you can use. So you can discard this for a shoot three, which is more powerful than plus two dice shoot but this is two dice for the rest of the game. This is just three extra dice for one shoot action. It's usually better to have the passive, but one reason why you might do this action is because you may not have any more than three of these gear cards in play. Now, as you can see right here, it says that remains on a location once deployed does not apply towards item limit. So this tree stand doesn't actually apply to our limit. So we actually could play these three cards, which would max out our gear cards, and then we could play this card as an additional thing. So, I don't know, I think, you know, I might just do that. So I think I will get plus two dice for shoot, plus one die for hide, and then plus one die for hunt. So now we are all geared up and ready to go, hopefully. Now we could play this tree stand now, or we can play it later. I'm actually thinking that I just want to play it now and just get a bunch of stats, bonuses here, do that. All right, so now we have two cards left. We have a wild and then a shoot. So I think what I want to do is do a little bit of hunting. So this is another action you can do, and you can discard a card for a hunt action. Now, this is a wild, so this can be anything. So this is going to be a hunt action. That's how I'm gonna use it. And then you'll take dice equal to the activity of the location you're in. So it takes two dice. Then you also add the dice from any number of hunt actions or wild cards that you discard. So this one just gives me one. And then you also have the specific abilities that you get from your gear card. So this deer call gives me plus one die for hunting. And then the tree stand also gives me a die for hunting. So I have a total of five dice. Then you roll all these dice. All right, so we got a bunch of low numbers. So we have a three, we have two threes, a two, a four, and then a five. Fives and sixes are successes. For each success you take during a hunt action, you're going to be able to take one of these cards at random and place it onto this deer mat here, which means that these are the deer that you see. And then you can identify them, hopefully, and then shoot them, again, hopefully. So we could just keep this as it is and take one success and just get our one deer or we could discard any card from our hand. Doesn't matter what's on the front side, just discard any card from our hand to either re-roll a die, which is very self-explanatory, we take this two, re-roll it, or we can bump a die, which is very useful. What bumping is, is that you can just take a card and add one to it. So this four could become a five, which is a success. And so we have this one card. So we don't have that many resources at our disposal. We can use this now or save it for later. I think because I don't have really that many resources for this particular hunt action, I think I'm just gonna kind of play it safe, or play it cheap, rather, for now and just save this. And so I'll take one success, which means one deer card is placed on the mat. Next, we have a deer card on the mat over here and we want to know what this deer is. We see this deer in the distance. 
But what is it? So, we also have this hunt tracker here. Now, there's three ranges. There's long, medium, and then short range. You start in long range after you take your hunt action. You're going to take this little token and place it in the long range. And then, it says that deer appear long range and no high test is needed. So each time this marker moves, you're going to need a high test to make sure that the deer don't see you and run away. But for the first one, when you just go to long range, you don't have to do that. And we'll need to do that later, most likely. Then we also have a hunter action. Now you can choose one of these actions to do per distance, but the first one doesn't have any choice. It's just ID. So you make an identification check. And what that is, is you're going to take the number of dice equal to the vantage, which is two, and you're going to add any cards that you discarded and any different bonuses you have here. So our tree stand gives us plus one ID, and those are the dice you're going to roll. Now one thing, to initiate a hunt action, you must discard a card that is a hunt card or a wild card. When you are doing every other check inside of a hunt action, you do not need to discard a card to initiate that check. So I don't actually have a card I could discard to give me dice for an identification check. I don't need to do that. I just am going through with the rest of the hunt action because I already discarded that card to initiate the hunt action. I just can keep on going through all the different steps of the hunt action without needing to discard more cards per check, which is good. So I'm going to roll these dice and see what I get. All righty then. So we have a five, a four, and a two. Now. This means we have one success. What do successes do in this case? Well, you're going to take one of the cards on the deer map per success and flip it over. So we, again, have the option to reroll a bump by discarding cards. But the thing is, we don't need to. We have one success, which means we're going to flip over this one card here. So we don't need to spend any more resources to flip over multiple cards because there's just one there. So we will get rid of these dice and flip this card over. Now, it is a doe. And doe are not what we're looking for. We do not want to shoot a doe. We want to shoot a buck, right? This is the number of points that that deer is worth. And as you can see, a doe is worth nothing. So we don't want to shoot this. In fact, we cannot shoot it. So we are going to take this and we're just going to set it back. And then we'll continue with our hunt action. But I don't want to shoot that, so nothing really is too great is going to happen. Next, we're in the medium, which we have to do a high test, and you need one success. So that's very simple, just like all other checks. All right, so the high test uses the cover stat, so that's going to be two. And then we have the cover scent, which gives us an extra hide die. And then, actually, his tree stand gives us plus one die for hiding. I think I actually applied that to the hunt action, which was a mistake. I messed up there, and uh, oh well, we'll just run with it, but that should have been for hiding, not for hunting. I apologize. So let's roll these, and then we have two successes, and again, the chart said we needed one, so we are good. We don't need to bump anything else because we have passed that. And then, when you're at medium range, you have two options in terms of hunter actions. First, you can ID with plus one die or you can shoot, and you need two successes to hit. Now, I actually don't need to do either of these. I don't need to identify any more deer because all the deer that are on the hunt mat are identified, and then I cannot shoot the doe, so I don't want to do that. And then we can just go to the short range, and we need two successes for our hide test, so we will take these four dice again, roll them, and we got one success, we need two, which means that all the deer are going to run away. So the hunt action is now over, and all the deer cards that run away, doesn't matter if they're face up or face down, you're going to take them all in a pile and set them in a little discard pile by the inactive deer deck. Now they are just gone. There's no way I can counter them again. Luckily, I actually knew what that was. So I know that's a doe, and I know that now there are not 20 doe in that deck, there are 19, which is helpful. But if I failed my identification check, and that would still be put in the discard pile, but it'd still be face down, so I would have no idea. Like, I wouldn't know if the deer that ran away from me was a huge buck or a tiny little doe. 
So it is helpful that I actually know what it is. Now, in addition to that, we also need to reduce the activity at that location by one, which, you know, we're moving around hunting inside this location, the deer are starting to run away. All right, so that's gonna be, you know, maybe we wanna, you can't, so that means you can kind of, so that prevents you from staying in one spot and spending the entire game there. You need to spend some time exploring, which is what we're going to do. So we can discard this card to draw up to our hand size. We can discard any card to draw up to your hand size, but if you have no cards in your hand, you can just draw up to your hand size for free. So it usually makes sense to just use all the cards in your hand before drawing a new hand, which is what I'm going to do. So I can move two here. So you are allowed to move diagonally. There's not too many restrictions on movement. I'm just gonna go right here. And this is another wilderness. It does not have a draw card action, but we do get five dice. So let's roll these five dice. All right, so all these twos become ones. This one becomes a zero, so we can just get rid of that. We don't want that. And then the six becomes a three. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the activity on a three so I can get a bunch of cards from that deck, and then I'll just put the other ones at one. So I have three here. All right. And then move my pawn there, and then my second movement, I will go right here. And this is dense. So this requires you to discard a card, and then you can move three deer from the inactive pile to the active deer mat. So what that means is we have to discard a card, and I actually have no cards to discard, so I get out of that, which is good. And then we can take three deer from here and place that in the active pile. So now we have a bunch of deer. Now we have a bunch of deer that are in the active pile, which means that we can hunt anywhere and have a bunch more deer available. Now we have no cards in our hand, so we're going to be able to draw six cards because that's our hand size. So first, I will take an ID card. And again, I can take a card from here or just from the deck. I'll take a hide card. A wild, oh, another wild, oops, put that back, a shoot, and then this is a scent blocking clothes gear card, which gives you plus one die to hide or a hide three. Now, I already have my maximum number of gear cards, so I don't really want that that much. I think I'll just take a hide card here. I guess I could have used that for a hide three, that could have been useful, oh well. So now I am going to uh, say discard this high card to move one right here. So I'll go here and this one has an interesting thing. So draw two cards and then keep one. So we draw the top two cards, can keep one, I'll take the wild. And then this card can go on the top or bottom of the deck. I'll just put it back on top. And then we have three dice to roll. All right, wow, that's pretty good. We've got three and then two twos. So I will take a two for activity, a three for vantage, and then a two for cover. I think that's what I'll do. So I'll take two more cards into the active deer pile, and then can I take a hunt action? This is a good place to hunt. All right, there I go. So I have a wild here, I'll discard that. The activity is two. Wild card gives me one extra. And then I have one from Hunt. All right, so we have four dice. Now I could discard more wild cards to get more dice. But I think I'll save those for now. Okay, well, that's really good. So we have three successes. So we take three cards and add them to the deer mat. Then we're going to see it's an ID action. That's what's next. And we don't need a hunt, or a hide, sorry. We don't need a hide action. So, we have three for our vantage. So we have three dice. And then let's take this ID card right here, which gives us three dice as well. So that's six. And this is a good time to say that you are not allowed to ever roll more than eight dice at a time. Which is not really a rule that I've ever had to deal with because you're not going to be rolling that many dice often. We have one success, so we can flip over one card. So we could also discard this wild to flip over another one. I think I will. We can discard any card, but wild is the one I will do. Two successes, so we can flip over two cards. And they're both dope, so 
you know, those are useful to me. Alright, then we will go to the medium range, so we need one success for our hide. And then we have one from this, two from the cover, and then we can discard this hide here for more. Uh, I don't think I'm going to. I think we'll just keep it as it is. And that is good. So, we did that. And then we can do a shoot, or we can do an ID. Now, I'm going to do the ID because I want to know what this last gear is. And we get plus one die for this, so we get four dice, three from Vantage, and then one from being at medium range. Makes it easier to identify the deer. Then we can discard something else. I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm just going to do this. I just need one success, so it should be good. One success, we actually got two. So here we go. And it's another dough, so useless. And I'll just skip through the rest of this hunt action. Because we all know I'm not going to shoot anything, so that's going to go down there to this profile. Activity goes down by one. All right, so now what do I want to do? Well, I think I want to... Hmm, I can try doing a small little hunt action. Now let's see what happens. So, wild. We'll get one for activity, one for wild. And then roll these dice. All right, we got one success. It's pretty good. And add that card to the deer mat. Then... Our ID check will be three right there, and then I have no cards to discard there, so I'll just do that. And we got two successes, so we get to flip this over, and it is another doe, which I'm just going to skip through the rest of the hunt action, because again, nothing's going to happen, and the activity goes down to zero. All right, now let's go ahead and discard this high card and move two. Go here. It's a wilderness. Draw two, keep one. Just kind of nice. You know, I'll, I'll take this ground bind. All right, then we roll three dice. We have a two, a two, and a zero. Okay, well, we'll do two for activity, two for vantage, and then a zero for cover. And then for our second movement, Let's go ahead and go down here. It's a wilderness, another draw two, keep one. So we have an ID and a hide. Let's take this ID. Then we have three more dice, again. All right, two, two, zero, again, exactly like last time. So we'll do, you know, let's do the same thing. I have an idea. I will take Huh, okay, so I was thinking I could do... I was thinking of doing this hunt action and then having the plus two dice for hiding, but of course I can only do one of those, so I can either discard this for a hunt or I can deploy this for hide. And then I couldn't actually hunt. So let's try swapping this around me. You know what? I have an ID and a shoot card. So I think I'll put this cover at 2 and this vantage at 0, leaving the activity as it is, and then I will discard this for a 3 die hunt action, which I'll also add 2 for activity, so it's 5 dice total. Ah, plus my deer calls, so that's going to be 6. Okay, so we have 2 successes, so we'll take those 2, nothing else, add 2 dice, 2 the deer or two cards, right? Then we will ID. We have nothing for our vantage, but we have two right here for my ID card. So this is not super likely to have great results. Let's see. Nothing, okay. Well, I could discard this card to get another reroll. Hmm, let's do it. So I'll discard this card, reroll this. And it's a five, so that's a success. Flip this over. It's a doe. Nothing useful to me. Zero points. Then, hide it, test. We have two cover, plus one for the cover scent. So we'll roll these. All right, we got enough successes. So now we can do an ID with plus one die. So we'll just roll this one die, see what happens. Oops, that's not good. All right, not a success. So I'm just going to end this hunt action because there's nothing else that really could happen. 
even if I succeeded in my hide it test, the deer would just run away because I can't shoot face down cards. So I know this deer is, this is a doe, but this, I have no idea what this is. So that's not great. Still going to one pile. And now I have no cards in my hand, so let's stock up. So let's go ahead and take a scent blocking clothes card, a ID, a shoot. There we go, hunt. I was wondering where those all were. So we have a hunt action card, another one, let's take that. One more, and let's see. Let's take this ID card. And I did forget to I think I am going to move the D card. Bump this down by one, so let's do that. It's a wilderness with five dice, so those are usually pretty promising. Okay, wow, that is very interesting. So these all end up being zeros after we divide them by two. These are threes, so we're gonna be great at two things and absolutely terrible at one. I'm thinking we have a total of five hunt. So let's go to zero activity and then three vantage and cover. Okay. Then let's go ahead and do a hunt action with three dice. And let's put two more in there. So let's do five. And then a sixth one for our deer car call. Oh boy, that's not great. So we have one success and then a bunch of really low stuff. Uh-huh. Well, bumping wouldn't do anything. Unless we discarded two to get this three up to a five, which is probably not worth it. We could re-roll by discarding one of these. You know what, I'm just gonna keep the one success and maybe something will come of it. That kind of stinks. We got a lot of dice there, but nothing good happened. All right, well, next up, we're going to go to the ID action. We have three cards here, or three dice, sorry. And then we could discard this card here. So you get more, I don't think I want to, because it's just one card. Or one, yeah, one D right here. We just got the one success, so that is good. And it is a large buck. Wow, this is a 10-pointer, worth 14 points. That's something kind of confusing, because the buck is a 10 point buck, and in the game it's worth 14 points. Kind of odd, but this is a very good deer to get if I can. Let's go ahead and go into the hide test. We need one success. So we have three dice here for our cover and one for the hide. Well, okay, so here's the thing. Short range, when you get to short range, you need two successes to successfully hide. The advantage is that the shoot action only needs one success as opposed to two successes. So should I hide and wait until the buck gets too closer to me to shoot him, or do I just shoot him now? And there's a greater chance of missing, but there's a smaller chance of me failing a hide test. I have this two shoot card here. Advantage is three, and then we also have this scope, which gives us plus two dice. So I actually think I'm pretty good for shooting, so I think I wanna do it now. So I wanna get him right now. So we can roll these four dice and hope to get success, and if we don't get one, we can just bump it with this card, or re-roll, or we could just get three dice. So would I rather roll three extra dice, or be able to bump the highest die here, or re-roll one of the lower ones? So this game has a ton of different choices that makes you think about which one you want to do. So I think I want to keep this and try to possibly bump it. Let's see what happens. And we did not get anything. So we can just bump it with this. And there we go, we have it. So would that have been better to roll the three dice? I think in that situation, bumping it might be the best thing to do just because you have more options. You can look to see which one you should bump and then focus it on that. But rolling three dice might be better if you needed more than one success. That's just my thought. But it is an interesting decision. So now we can ID with plus one die we see the deer we want. We want this large buck. So we want to shoot this thing. So we don't need to do that ID action. Instead, we're going to shoot. So if we get three dice from our advantage, two dice from this shoot card and the goodness card, and then two more dice from the telescopic sight. So we have seven dice here, and then, ooh, we have seven dice here, and then one card we can discard to bump. 
So those ones are really good. I need two successes though. And I just killed my guy. Okay, so we got, wow, we got four successes and then we can bump another one to get five. So we just need these two. These two sixes or two fives, whatever, it doesn't matter. We have two successes. So that means we successfully bag this buck. So now we get 14 points and this is our final score. And then we can look inside this book and see what little thing it has here. So five to eight is novice. Let them grow up a bit first, would you? Nine to 12 is not bad. You have some potential. Three to 15, which is what we got, is nice going. You are a true hunter. Now, if you get 16 plus, it's songs will be sung about you. You are a hunting legend. So we didn't get this, but we got nice going. You're a true hunter, which is a pretty good score. And so that is how you play Whitetail Wilderness Woodland Pursuit, designed by Kevin Shod. I hope you all enjoyed this video, and I hope you will all check this game out on Board Game Geek and order a copy from the Game Crafter because it is a ton of fun. And please like this video and subscribe to Mousestorm Gaming for more content just like this. And in the meantime, I hope you all have a great day and happy gaming. Mm -hmm.